Hey, welcome back to the channel. We're here in the walkthrough series with Wilfredo. It's been a long while for this one. Actually, I think his beard has grown out since we were here last. So if you don't know what's going on, here's the situation. This series is for newer players, and we're just following this story up through winter. And while we go through it, I'm telling you how I'm doing, what I'm doing, and also why I'm doing it. And we always start with a quick tip, so here we go. Okay, so to get us started off, uh, first tip of the day, quick tip, two quick tips for you. One, um, I might have said it in a past episode, so I'll just give you this one for free. I, I right click on the sink now and it, it doesn't do anything, right? Oh, apologies for the darkness, but the power's out. Okay, so the power's out and also I can't use the sink. Why? Because the water is also shut off. I go into here, you can almost see me. I right click this sink. Here's another way to know that the water is shut off. Hover over drink on something if, if it lets you. And you'll see it says first uh, thirst and then it says water. So after the water shuts off, every uh, water source in the game has some leftover water and you can actually view that when you hover over drink here. So if you're trying to think, oh, should I take a bath at this time? Should I fill up all my bottles at this source? Just keep an eye on, on that. Let yourself know like, do I want to drain the source in my base? For example, this, uh, let's see, that's a source. I think, yeah, that's a source, fancy toilet, from the back of the toilet, of course. Wilfredo's a man of class. Um, and the bathtub, water 100. So we have three water sources in here. We're just gonna leave those. I'm gonna try not to drain them uh, in case I really need water. It's good to have the backup in the base. And right now, this is our base. I don't wanna say it, but yeah, we haven't found a car yet. So another thing I noticed, uh, quick tip, I, on a server I was playing on, I'm gonna cut away here. Um, uh, server I was playing on, we were running into lag issues happening in a certain area. So here's what we do. Uh, you saw we went to solo sandbox, but you can also do this in server settings. Find your meta tab, open that up. Now we want to give our machine less work. And here's how, lower your blood level. Now your machine is drawing less blood. Then multiplayer server can also let you remove blood after time. So it's not always there being redrawn. Then corpse removal, bump that way down. So you have fewer corpses around over time uh, and that's less for the game to draw and keep track of. That should help you in solo play, but also help your players if you're hosting a multiplayer server. Okay, so hopefully that helped with your performance issues if you're having any. Uh, get rid of the blood, get rid of the extra corpses, you don't need them. And, and just as a, nice, a last little thing too, you can clean up any items. Oops, forgot, speaking of items. Clean up any items around your base too. So if I had tons of all these items or lots of people in a server, everyone leaving items around, the game has to draw all of those and keep track of them. So just, just put them away. Um, I have a jacket here. Now here's what I'm looking at. You see the bite and scratch defense on that, 10 and 25. I press P, open up my protection over here. Um, my left upper arm has protected me more than once and actually yeah, left arm's damaged too. Um, it's got some damage to it. It's not really protected me at all. If I put this leather jacket on, it will improve the uh, defense of this left upper arm. However, uh, the rest of my current jacket, firefighter jacket, the rest of it is very, very good protection. I'm not going to mess with that just yet, so I'm just going to hope that I don't get bit on the upper left arm today. See what happens, and I'm just going to leave this jacket behind. Actually, you know what? I'm going to dump a bunch of weapons, or sorry, a bunch of things we're not using. And cut right back. Okay, last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put the axe up on here so I can always find it in a hurry if I need. And here's something that's uh, not quite a quick tip, but uh, we'll do it right now anyways. I just picked up a kitchen knife and we haven't been playing much with spears on this playthrough, but I think we'll just demo a little bit of that. See how many uh, spears I can make. So you can use t uh, tree branches or planks for this. I'm gonna use planks just cause I'm not using them for anything else. Um, I should be boarding up windows. I'll do that later. I'm going to use this kitchen knife. Oops, you can see create spear is gonna use chipped stone or kitchen knife, yada, yada. I actually didn't know you could use chipped stone. Wow, okay, anyway. I'm uh, going to see how many spears I can make. Each time he crafts a spear out of a plank, it has a risk to damage the knife. And yeah, there you go. If you heard that, the knife just broke. So I can get rid of that. I'm just going to chuck it outside. Drop. I said drop, Wilf Wilfredo. Thank you. Um, okay, we have two spears now. Okay, so... What are we doing? We're going right back to where we were last time. We're going to keep clearing Zeds, keep pushing out to the highway. Um, still trying to... Okay, so we'll uncut here actually. Um, I just saw some zombies out there a little closer to home. So here's what we're going to do. Two crafted spears um, and I'm just going to put one on my back and then one in my hands. So the one that is on my back is not the one in my hands. Okay, and you're going to see why in a second. So we're going to get up here. Yeah, okay, there's a few. Um, so actually, let's crouch. Let's see if we can call a couple of them over. So I'm crouching, I'm queuing. Yeah, I got two, that's perfect. So, 
There we go. Once they get within a range of you, you got a plus 30% chance on a critical if there's no other zombies around them. It's like a one, I don't know the actual distance. This seems a little more than one tile, I think. I, I used to know. Anyway, we'll look that up later. Um, so what happens if you hit them and they don't have anyone else near them, you have a plus 30% chance to crit. And if you do crit, it will lock you into that little spear animation. So a crit, I think has a, sorry, a spear, I think has a 10 times crit bonus. But even without that special bonus, um, and without the extra special crit chance, it still does good damage. It can still do regular crits, so unlike the knives and the, uh, you know, stabby weapons, the jaw stabs, they cannot crit unless they get a jaw stab. Spears are great because they can still take their really good crit multiplier. Okay, spears break all the time though, so the one in my hands is broken. Press number one, take the one off my back. Ooh, look at that. So that was a, that was a crit. When it's zombies on the ground, you might already know this, I think I said it, but... Uh, pass them. So when a zombie's on the ground, if you hit them, uh, you get a five times damage multiplier. It counts as a critical hit, kind of. It's actually better than a critical hit because it's a five times damage multiplier minimum. So with a weapon like a spear, which has, I think, a ten times critical multiplier, um, if a zombie is down and you hit them, you actually get to use the higher of times five or times critical, depending on your weapon. So if I use, like, uh, a hammer, I think it's times two critical, so it would actually be five times five if they're down. If I use a spear, a spear is a better, better critical than times five, so it's going to use that. It's going to use the spears times ten critical. So always try to knock your zombies down. Um, well, let's see if I cut again, if nothing exciting happens up here. And I don't necessarily just want to kill everything. Um, oh, we actually need some water. So again, power's out, water's off. But we're going to... We're not going to take water from our base when we can help it, so... I filled that up. Now, usually, actually, what I would do, I would recommend you drink and then fill, because I just had to fill my bottle twice, because the first thing you did, you drank it really fast. Now, I was kind of reckless, right? If there was more than just this couple of zombies, I probably would have been swarmed and killed right there, but uh, such was not the case. Well, Fredo's been pretty lucky. I feel there's been numerous times I should have died, and I didn't. What the heck was that? It got hooked on the wall? I don't know. That was a, so that was a locking spear animation. So one thing to just be mindful of, if you're scared of getting locked in a spear animation, um, don't be scared. Just remember that the thing, it will only happen if that targets on... Oh my god. Okay, finish that thought. Spear crit will only happen if uh, there's no other zombies around your target. So if there's a zombie around you, that zombie is like... You might still get animation locked if there's a zombie around you. So don't let there be a zombie around you. Um, if there are no zombies around your target. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Anyways, this car is not, uh, turning on, but I'm gonna leave the key in the ignition, so just click the little key in ignition, it'll stay there. Um, now I wanna check out the status on this thing, because this is, this is the very first car that we've actually had a key for. Okay, so if you haven't looked at vehicle mechanics in a while, especially new players, here we go. Um, check that the engine is pretty good. I try to aim for at least 50% because that's going to determine how well it starts. Same with the battery. So battery is pretty good. Um, engine sucks, so this is not a keeper. Engines are very difficult to repair, especially when you have a grand total of zero mechanics. Not repairing any engines anytime soon. Um, gas tank is out of gas, so good news, bad news. Good news is we can now keep uh, gasoline in water bottles. Crazy, right? Any container, I think. Uh, any container with a lid. So, for example, um, if I had an empty bottle, which I do not, we need an empty bottle. You know what? Should I just drink all this water and try it? Okay, for the sake of demonstration, Wilfredo, chug that bottle. Wait, can I not? I don't want to just pour it on the ground. Pour it into the bowl. Sure, let's do that. And we'll pour the rest on the ground. Okay. Now right click. And I cannot take gas from this. Because it's flipped over or because it's out of gas. One of the two, I don't know. But there's another vehicle up here. Let's see if I can get gas out of this one. Ooh. Dramatic gas music. Cue the gas music. Uh, no. Is this just out of gas as well? Or am I doing something wrong here? Let's see. No zombies here yet. Oh, here they come, here they come. We're hover over gas, it's out of gas, okay? We'll keep going. Right click, nothing's happening. Probably also out of gas. So what I'm doing right now is, I'm not, I'm not interested in clearing out this area at the moment. I'm just kind of like looking to set a target. 
my target will be an operational vehicle. Then I will probably clear around the vehicle if it needs to be repaired and stuff, or if it needs to be gassed up. Um, otherwise, oh my god, oh my god. Um, otherwise, I don't care about the zombies, and you don't need to either. I Maybe mean, that's the big tip for today. Don't care about the zombies. The zombies are only a problem when you know where you need to be, and they are also there. That's the only time. Um, otherwise, like this, like we can outwalk them all day. We can have, I think, two levels of exhaustion, which is a lot, and still outwalk them all day. But remember, once you get one level of exhaustion, stop fighting and get away, because you have 50% less damage output. Okay. So there's a car, I'm going to right click it. Now I think actually you can't tell if there's gas in it unless you're pretty close to right click. That one's probably also out of gas. So nice thing about this, I'll actually call them around and stuff because I'm headed away from my base. So I may as well drag all these zombies with me, right? It's like you walk in your dog, you take them out, you got to get walk your zombies, you know, take care of the neighborhood, no one else is going to do it. They just need a good stretch. There we go. Come on, happy zombies. Happy zombies over here. Alright, I'm gonna cut, see if anything interesting happens. You know, to show you the spears, actually, maybe I could pause and roll a clip. Roll the clip! Future trauma, not in editing. Roll the clip. Okay, so yeah, this green circle is just about how far the zombies need to be. It's minimum distance to trigger your spear critical. Special spear crit. Oh, there we go. Okay. I was just about to tell you my mission has been a failure, but you know what? We're siphoning some gasoline. We've got a little bit of gas in a water bottle now. We're also getting quite thirsty. Now, Wilfredo is a thirsty boy. We built him like that. And he's doing exactly what he's told. He's getting high thirst. Now he's also getting drowsy. That means, even if I wanted to, right now I probably wouldn't fight. And I wouldn't fight because 50% damage debuff. So, at this point we're just going to take the gas. Hopefully get back to that uh, car that I pointed out. And if we're lucky, we'll grab a drink of water along the way. Now these zombies... I don't particularly care for. Now, okay, we're drowsy. We're also thirsty, we're also wet, we're also unpleasantly hot. And all of these things, I believe... Yep, there it is. All of these things are going to increase our risk of exhaustion by lowering our endurance recovery. Endurance is like your stamina. So, maybe I can pop in here for a drink, because yep. Do you see it? That That's my run speed. It is quite limited now. That's, uh, that's a little dicey, honestly. Okay, good. Now we can get into this house. I'm going to quickly open this window in case we need to get out of this house. We're going to drink. Let's see if we can get a quick little water bottle out of this. Or, you know what? You know what? Maybe we'll just leave. Yeah. There's a horde that big and you hear the window break. That's a good time to get out. Oh. Okay. Some of them saw us, not all of them. So I'm going into crouch mode so I don't pick up too many. Get behind the trees, start breaking some line of sight. Uh, yeah, I forgot. When you come out of hop a fence, you come into it in crouch mode. Okay, now I'll walk. So there's too many. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh my god, we're exhausted, we're drowsy, we're already thirsty again. Come on, buddy. But, uh, you know what? I'm looking at the time. I think that's all for today. I like to keep these short lately, so uh, drop a like if you want me to keep going with this series. Uh, if you have any questions or other tips, drop those in the comments as well, especially if you have any other comments about the series in general, uh, directions you'd like me to take it, specific things you'd like answers on. Um, anyways, we're going to see Wilfredo next time. Until then, stay safe out there in the end times, survivors.